Hey everybody and welcome to the Yamaha AR195 Sport Boat. I've been looking forward to this one for a while and it's a gorgeous day, so let's make the best of it. In this video, I'm gonna review this boat. We're gonna crawl all over it, find all the features and all the storage here. Then we'll do some docking and talk about slow speed control, but don't worry, you know we're gonna do a top speed run and run this thing hard, so make sure you stay tuned. Let's start with what's new for 2019. This AR195 is now three inches longer and two inches wider, and the hull shape has been slightly redesigned. Now that's for two main reasons. First of all, to eliminate bow rise when you really hit the throttle, and I can confirm that if you just nail the gas on this thing, the bow does not come up all that tall. Now, second of all, Yamaha wanted to help with hull packing, basically to make sure that in the big choppy waves, this thing is gonna cut right through the wave rather than come down and really hit you hard and once again based on everything I've done today I didn't have any real big hits even when I was coming through those big waves now we're really cruising in the AR195 we're doing 25 miles per hour right now so we can get a feel for how she moves at speed first of all the weighting of the steering wheel when you're moving very slowly uh, there's no feedback at all but once you get up to speed the the weight really comes on so the wheel feels nice and heavy in my hands makes it a little bit more confident feeling, which is definitely appreciated. Now, let's throw her into a turn. Always gotta be aware of what's around. Here we go. Pretty nice little turn here. And what's interesting, and again, this is more of a characteristic of jet boats in general than this jet boat, but this boat stays very much on top of the water. It doesn't feel like it digs in very much. It just sorta skirts right on top. And here's what I love. So I'm mid-corner. Dial back the throttle and little hit. Yeah. So what's really cool about a jet boat, once again, because the thrust is making you turn, when you're mid-corner like that, you can actually just kind of burp the throttle a little bit and you get the back end coming around on you. So in a boat like this, if you're, like I said, mid-corner and, oh, you know what? I'm not turning quite sharp enough. You just throttle up a little bit and then it just cranks it into a corner. Very nice. acceleration here is just okay. It's a little sluggish. Watch, I'm going to pin it. There is, you know, an initial hit of power, but then it takes a moment for the boat to kind of slowly catch up to where the engine RPM is. Now let me give you the overall dimensions. So for length, this boat is 19 and a half feet long. The beam is eight feet, two inches, and the total height is eight feet, seven inches. And of course, that is with the water sports tower on it. Now Yamaha says that the storage capacity on board is 422 gallons, which is just insane. But I can tell you that there are really a lot of storage cubbies. So why don't we walk around this boat and let me show you all of the spots you can store stuff and a few of the features. All right, everybody, time to crawl all over this boat. And we're starting back here on the swim platform. It's a two level platform, nice and big. You do have two cup holders back here. So if you're just chilling, you can hang out at the back of the boat. Now here we can open up this panel and this is going to be impeller access now here in the center first of all right there is a hookup so that you can tow you know tubers or wakeboarders right here in the center there's a little pass through and you're actually meant to put your foot right there so you step through step down and then you're into the boat so we'll go ahead and turn around and focus on the back here so of course you have one seat over in the driver's side corner. That's a nice solid handle right there for them to hold on to. And now this seat bottom lifts right off of there. And that's actually the cover for the boat that's stuffed right in there. So the entire cover fits right in there. Now over here, we got a spot for two cup holders. And down there is actually the cleat that helps to hold in a table. You can actually get a table for this boat. It fits right here. And then that driver's seat can swivel around, but more on that in a moment. Now it's time for a top speed run, everybody. We've got a nice flat lake here. So let's point it towards the water. And let's shoot. <laughs>
or basically 50 is where this AR195 tops out at. And I mean, that certainly is uh, plenty fast. There's no doubt about that. Now let's take a look at the heart of the beast. So that's actually this step. Now that's actually on gas assist shocks, which is nice. And there she is. That's the 1.8 liter supercharged SVHO engine. And of course, this is really great access down into your powertrain. Better than what you're gonna find on a, a wave runner, that's for sure. So you can definitely access your engine when it does come time for maintenance. And that hatch closes and nice and securely tightens up just like so. Now over here in the passenger side, we have much more of like a chaise lounge sort of thing going on. So you could have one person leaning up there one person leaning up back there. And let's open up this seat. Now this seat's actually on hinges. You can see them down there in the corners. So this storage is plenty big, enough for a cooler that we have in there, got a life jacket. And down in here at the very back is where you're gonna find your battery. Now let me show you how the, how the cruise control works here. So we're cruising along at 28. There's a button down here on the right. When you press it up, you'll see right there, cruise plus two plus three, plus four, all the way up to cruise plus eight. So what that means is if your speed is set to 30 miles per hour, you can go 31 through 38, and you can actually control it using that button, which just means that for those little tiny increments of a couple miles per hour slower or faster, you don't have to actually mess with the throttle. Now let's take a closer look at this driver's seat. So first of all, you got this front section, which is hinged, folds up like that, and that reveals your controls down here. So this piece slides out, and then depending on which way you twist it, it does two different things. So first of all, it can slide forward and backwards. So you can adjust this thing to make sure it's a good distance for you. And then if you twist it the other way, you can actually get the seat to rotate. So you can turn and you can actually face the people in your boat. It'll actually spin all the way around too. So if you set that table up back there, you can spin this chair and then eat at the table. And then when you're done, pops back in and boom, it's ready for sitting again. And I gotta say, it is a pretty comfortable seat. Now to add on to that, there's also a tilt steering wheel. See that? So you can set the tilt of the steering wheel exactly to where you want it to be as well. Now guys, there's even more storage we gotta talk about. First is this big floor storage bin, and this thing is massive. And then once it's closed, it's nice and solid, secure. Then we got storage on either side here. So over here on the passenger side, I will show you, there's the table. So the table that came with the boat is right there. And there's a couple other things in there, but once again, this is quite a cavernous storage space. Close this door, it closes up tight without having to latch it. Then we got the same thing over here on the driver's side, and look at that, there's even a little garbage can hanging on that door. Now in here, we got an extra cushion, but once again, a nice big space, and then important too, you can actually get in to all your electronics that power your console and your steering. So for access, once again, this boat has plenty of it. Now let's hop up into the nose. So first of all, you got a couple of grab handles. Those are especially important when you're riding up here in the nose or when your kids are riding up here in the nose. Now these front seats, the cushions are also hinged. You can see them right there. And once again, you got a big storage under that seat. There's an extra cushion, some extra line that's running to the dock. Now we can spin over and take a look at what's on this side. And once again, same thing, that nice hinge system. And you got a big, deep storage container, which is not even near full on our boat today. So you really can fit all kinds of stuff. And then right up here on the nose, there's the nose. And that is actually a pass-through you can see down there which goes back to that floor storage. So if you did have something long and skinny, even fishing rods, let's say, you could actually pass them all the way up here to the nose. But then under this cushion, there's another little storage bin too. And then we can't forget, I haven't been showing you the speakers. So we got one speaker there, one speaker there. You got a cup holder in that corner. You got a cup holder in that corner. Now let's keep looking for speakers. Another speaker right there. Another speaker right there. Oh, that looks to be about it. I see four so far, and then I don't think there's any on the rear end. So yeah, you got four speakers, which is hooked up to that audio system right there. But seriously, guys, this boat offers just a pile of storage, all kinds of little nooks and crannies and cubbies. And then more importantly than that, a number of really nice, comfortable seating solutions and different kinds of seats to suit different kinds of passengers and different kinds of moods.
So let's take a look at all these different drivers controls here. First of all, we got this row of switches. So over here on the right, we got no wake mode. Now, if you just pop the boat into forward and you hit up on the no wake, you can see it shows up right there and it'll basically keep you at a super slow speed and as the name implies you'll have no wake so if you're cruising down a no wake zone or through a marina you can just let the boat creep you along there's three miles per hour i think that's about as quick as she'll get and actually if you want to speed it up you got a couple different settings in no wake mode or if you crank it down there you can just shut it right off now down here we obviously have a horn gotta hear that nice little horn you got a bilge pump got your nav lights and then courtesy lights and then over here on the left side we have the blower and the key okay everybody it's dark now let me show you the lights on the boat so there's this convenience light right back here that's right behind the driver's seat and essentially just illuminates a little piece of the floor just enough to help you get loaded and unloaded at night or if you do have people on board just enough to be able to see what you're doing now I'll hop off the boat and I'll show you the exterior lights because there's actually a couple markers. So first of all, there's the lights up there on your nose you can see, the red and the green. And then of course up top on that water sports tower, there's another marker light up there to make sure that people can see you from a long ways around. So then over here, you have two different power hookups down below, a 12 volt up above, a USB port and an aux in for your audio system, which is pretty neat. Now that's your stereo right there. And of course, like I mentioned earlier, you do have one cup holder there for you. Now, why don't we look a little bit closer at the electronics up here. So this is a nearly five inch screen, which runs Yamaha's Connect system. And so far I've been enjoying the system. First of all, it is a nice looking screen, nice and crisp and clear. And it gives you some decent information. Of course, your fuel, I love the depth. Now my lake here is an extremely shallow lake, so you won't see much more than five feet on that. Uh, nice to have your fuel economy down there, but who really cares about fuel economy in a boat like this? There's a trip, uh, there's how much fuel you have and there's actually your gallons per hour which is a pretty neat little readout now that's the water temperature right there 72 and a half and it's constantly changing i'm not sure what speed that is now if we actually go over this is the home screen just so you can see that now if we go over here you can see all these different measurements which were just popping up there for me so if we scroll down you have your water your economy you can set a trip uh, fuel flow you can see your highest speed 49 and a half you can see our average speed engine hours all kinds of useful information here in this screen now we go over here to settings and you can see all the different things that we can play with so the time the units the wellness is basically a maintenance reminder so that'll tell you when you got to bring your boat in brightness self-explanatory language and then depth this is cool you can set a depth alarm to make sure that if you are in some super shallow water the boat is going to tell you about it and that's important as well I actually want to talk about slow speed handling in this boat because it's one of the things that Yamaha made a big deal of for 2019. Now, just by nature, jet boats at slow speeds really don't handle all that great, and that's because there's no rudder on here. The only thing turning a jet boat is actual jet propulsion. So at slow speeds, um, historically, you would actually have to, you know, kind of give little throttle inputs to get the actual boat to turn. Now, what Yamaha has done for this boat, only for 2019, so it's new for 19 is they've put an extended articulating keel on it so the keel extends a little longer and the very back section of the keel it's essentially a rudder they don't call it a rudder but it's a rudder so this boat now has just a small little rudder on it but what that means is when I dial this back this is as slow a speed as possible and I crank the wheel there goes the boat now here is the key maybe you noticed it it's very slow to respond so look now i'm going right i crank it all the way back left again this is that minimum throttle slowly the boat reacts and there it goes now you can see here i will show you exactly how it works while docking and it is the case of you know once you get used to any system you can make it work so i you know went in and out a couple times got a feel for the boat and then i was able to do it well so there's no doubt that that articulating keel makes a positive difference but still do not expect this boat to be quick to react at slow speeds okay everybody time to dock now this is going to test a few things first of all my skills of course 
but then second of all the all-new articulating keel here on this 2019 model now it's out back right underneath the jet it essentially acts like a rudder basically and it just means that slow speed control in this boat is now much better on jet boats of old you would have actually needed jet propulsion some thrust to steer the boat which made slow speed maneuvering very hard because you actually had to give it a bit of throttle but now I'm able to just very calmly and smoothly bring the boat into dock and it is responding to my inputs slowly I will admit but it is responding to my inputs without me having to give it any real throttle which is truly the key and neutral I'll hit it with a bit of reverse and boom just like that Well, everybody, I had an absolute blast out here today demonstrating this AR195 for you. And let me tell you, when you have a boat that's this fast, looks this good, and is this comfortable, it makes you want to stay on the water all day long. Now, that's it for this review, guys. Make sure you go below, leave a comment. Let me know, do you like boat reviews? If you do, we'll bring you even more. Make sure you hit like, hit subscribe, and then come right back here to the channel for the latest news, views, and real-world boat reviews. See ya.